All right, Bo, welcome back. Welcome back. I appreciate your time. Uh, like, subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Most importantly, comment down below in regards to these videos. So we are pushing on, folks. We are continuing on in regards to the universal laws of nature. And this is the third law, the law of action, okay? Um, so I'm doing this mainly because this is what y'all want from me, you know what I'm saying? I've been getting a lot of messages in regards to continuing uh, my efforts of putting these universal laws of nature uh, in descriptive videos. Uh, as I've been doing, the first one was the law of oneness, and then the second one was the law of vibration. So I'm going to bring you all the law of action. You see what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, I can't thank you all enough for the, the attentiveness that you all are showing to the videos that I'm putting out. You know what I'm saying? My, my, my channel ain't that big, but we're growing. You know what I mean? I think we're up to, a, a, I think, about 200 plus subscribers now. You know, we came from nothing. Now we got 200 plus, so I appreciate the likes, I appreciate the subs, y'all share the information if it's only imperative and if it's only working, you know what I'm saying, if you understand it, you know, share it, um, if you don't understand it, ask the questions, do more research, do what you gotta do, but most importantly, uh, I don't want the free shares and the likes unless it's something that you can digest and pay for it in regards to sending that information to somebody else. You see what I'm saying? That's how it works. Uh, this this is the law of oneness. You know what I mean? That is that ecosystem that we're trying to create. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the system of us doing things for each other and not expecting compensation is, is ultimately what I would like for all of us to get to. You see what I'm saying? Um, the most... The highest commodity, the most, uh, you know, the, every, the thing that everybody is always trying to chase, the, everything that, is, uh, that has a dollar sign on it, right, that's worth anything, what people always try to withhold from each other is information. That's the only reason why one is richer and one is poor, is because one has a surplus of information and one has a lack of. So, with that being said... I'm just trying to promote the idea. I'm trying to promote the behavior of exactly what an ecosystem does is that we share information for all of our existence and we share the information for all of us to thrive, not just for one of us to survive while the other one is thriving. We have to share this information. So the quicker we understand that, I think the more cohesive um, and the more better life will be for all of us. So with that being said, the law of action, uh, I feel like not only do we always, we always put this, this law on the back burner. We, you know, it's like a lot of people will talk more about the law of oneness or the law of attraction and, and these other, these other laws that stand out. But the law of action, you know, without it, nothing ceases to exist. You know, without the law of action, nothing materializes, nothing manifests. Anytime you have an end goal, is because of the type of action you took to get to that said goal. You see, what we have to understand is not only is the law of action part of nature, right? It's also part of our spirituality. It's also part of culture. Um, so it's also part of our, uh, our science, okay? We understand what Newton's third law, uh, which is the third law of motion, which is every, you know, every action has an equal or opposite reaction, right? We understand that, or at least it was, it was, it was something that was able to be um, conceptualized in science, and we understand that without, the, without that action, there is no equal or opposite reaction, and whatever reaction there is, is because of an action, right? So... So for, 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 you know, the best example that I can give is when you swim, when you swim, you push against water, which then water repels you, right? Uh, when you, when you lean against the wall, that same inertia that you push against the wall, the wall will give back that same energy. So that also uh, is implemented in our in our day to day. It's all it's it's also implemented in our actions uh, towards each other, our actions towards 
the earth, the environment itself, uh, and everything that lives within the environment, whether it's animals, whether it's plant life, right? Um, what people don't understand is that even spiritually, right, we've heard of the word karma, right? We understand that the definition of karma is what you do will come back to you. So what you put out there, that energy will be reciprocated towards you, right? So if you are a good person and you, you do good deeds, you, you, you treat people nice, more than likely that reaction, based on the action of treating people nice, the reaction of that is people treating you with the same. They treat you right. They treat you kind. So if you treat them with respect, more than likely the reaction to that is being treated with respect right back. <clears throat> and then vice versa if you are a person that lives a life of crime you've heard of the saying live by the sword die by the sword right if you live by the action of shooting guns shooting people robbing people with pistols more than likely that same reaction will be reciprocated somebody going to shoot you or you will die by that gun you see it's the it's the same uh concept but it's it's these are this is the same concept in different circumstances of ex of existence, okay? So um, we can do this all day when it comes to like I said, we even call it karma. That when something happens, more than likely the same, if not worse, will happen to you, okay? We so we understand that fact. Um, without action, there is no manifestation. Without action, there is no manifestation. And so without manifestation, there is no uh, end goal. There is no uh, light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So for example to that, uh, you know, it, I find it funny. A lot of times, to give you an example, I'm going to lean on another example. You know, growing up, see, I'm in, this, I'm in Oklahoma City. So growing up, we had Kevin Durant over here before he left. And, uh, you know, my pops... We would watch the games, and sometimes, you know, I would catch my pops. He would say, well, no, okay, so they would interview Kevin Durant right before or after the game. And more than likely, let's say it's after the game, and he won. Probably got like 35 points. You know what I'm saying? Just did a really, really, he did a really good job in the game. Scored good points, blah, blah, blah. Now, a lot of times these commentators, you know, they would, they would ask him, you know, um, why do you, how do you play so good? How, how are you able to do this, blah, blah, blah. And what he will always say is, I was, you know, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to do this. I give all credit to God, right? I give all credit to Jesus, right? And my dad would always be like, man, that's such a good dude. That's such a good dude. Like, he's giving all that credit to Jesus. What? A selfless, humble man. And I used to sit back going, well, hold up. Like, I understand giving credit, right? But Kevin Durant didn't wake up shooting threes and making threes. He didn't wake up uh, dunking the way he does. He didn't wake up like that. He spent time doing it, right? So because of how he plays, which is a reaction to the action of him constantly practicing. But now... What he would do is he would negate all that action. He would negate all that action, which is the practice that he, you know, for all these years that he's been implementing to get to the position that he's in and just give credit to an invisible God as if that God had bestowed this physical talent to him where he can just wake up and just start hooping like he does. And so that's when people start getting the wrong ideas about how your action can lead to positive reactions or how your actions could lead to negative reactions. That's why for me, not only did I find it wrong, but I find it deceiving. It's very deceiving when you tell a kid that the only reason why I'm so good at something is because somebody just gave it to me. As opposed to pointing out to the kid that it, no, it took a lot of action for me to get to this point. And that's why that action is so important. That's why it is law when it comes to nature. Is because without the constant pursuit, the action, then 
your end game and your end goal will not be what it's supposed to be. But one thing is for sure is that that action is the most important and the most imperative part of the process. And it's not just any action. Uh, I think it was the, I think it was a writer, Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. He had said that, don't be fooled by, by considering motion as action, right? Don't, oh no, he said, he said, don't, don't confuse motion as action. That's what he said. He said, don't confuse motion as action. Just because you see somebody moving, it doesn't mean they're actually doing something. You understand what I'm saying? You could see somebody moving, but it doesn't mean they are moving towards what they're trying to achieve. Let me give you a good example. You see somebody working at McDonald's, busting their ass 40, 50 hours. Do they ever become the owner of that McDonald's that they bust their ass every goddamn day working? No. Majority of the time, do you ever see the person busting their ass at a Wendy's, end up owning that Wendy's, or even be becoming general manager of that Wendy's, or owning a franchise of that Wendy's? No. It's because ultimately, when we work, we're not working thinking, I'm working to own this company, or I'm working to get to an authoritative position in this company. I'm working towards having stock in this company. I'm working towards being one of the owners. Most of the time, we just, we're just working because we want to get to the end of that two weeks and get the check. And then spend the check on, you know, whatever we need, whether it's bills, whether it's kids, or whether it's food, whatever it is. But ultimately, the action, the, the intent behind the action is, is not where either you want it to be or it's not there at all. Or if it is there, like I said, it's a shallow intent. You're not looking at it going, I want to own this place. You're looking at it going, I just want to get my check and get home. So the intent behind the action is not only just as important as the action, but the intent behind the action is what drives and is what manifests the thoughts, is what manifests the dreams. And it takes all that mental, that spiritual, that untangible, and that's what materializes it and makes it something tangible and makes it something that you can actually see. So Kevin Durant dreamt of being in the NBA. Kevin Durant would envision himself in the NBA. The action that he, that he implemented is what made it real. That action that he implemented in between the dreaming is what made it real. So, the, and then the intent behind what he was doing, right? Why did he spend hours shooting threes? Is because he wanted to become a good three-point shooter? Why did he spend time on, uh, uh, you know, what's it called? Uh, 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 you know, endurance or acceleration or, uh, you know, agility. Why did he do that? It's because he wanted to be a power forward who was agile and can not only shoot threes, but he can drive the lane too. Now, how much is that helping him in his later years of playing in Texas or playing with the Thunder and then playing with, with the Golden State? All these things have materialized is because they were once just a thought. They were once just a thought. But what made them real is the action that is put before. Not only just any action, but the, 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 the specifically intent action. Why am I doing this? And I'm doing this because of this reason. As opposed to just saying I'm just doing it. There's a lot of people who play basketball every day. But none of them, and not all of them, get to a place of an NBA. Not all of them get to a place of playing in the Euro League. Some of them will just play outside pickup ball for years on end. Might be the coldest in the neighborhood, right? Might be the coldest on that side of town. But because their intent within their action was not driven to a specific goal, then you ain't going to go nowhere. You know, how, how do you get somewhere if you're not trying to figure out the roadmap to get there? 
if you want to be a singer, right? If you want to be a singer, you, you try to figure out the path to getting to, to becoming a professional singer. You don't just go out there and just start singing. How do you know if you're even singing right? How do you know how you could improve, you know, to become a better singer? You know, I used to, I used to always beat myself up about this too because I play music, right? I, I play the guitar. I taught myself how to play, but then I got to a certain point where I'm like, look, I can only teach myself so much, you know? I, how do I teach myself to play like a B.B. King or a Gary, a Gary Clark Jr.? You, you, you can't just imagine that and just think that, right? Because if, if that was that easy and everybody can just learn how to do all these things, that's, that's why you, you, know, you either have to find a guitar player that can teach you, right? You, you either have to, you have to get lessons, right? You, you got to go to somebody who understands the path on getting to the B.B. King status you don't just stumble and figure that shit out yourself so the more that you iron out the more that you focus the more that you tunnel vision your intent behind your action the more specific your the reaction is going to be if i want to play like a bb king then i need to seek out jazz i need to seek seek out blues guitarists right because they will get me closer to that style of music as opposed to me saying i want to play like bb king and then I go play some banjo music. That is not specifically intent-driven action to get me to where I'm trying to go. So we have to understand how much action has everything to do with getting somewhere. You can think about and envision what you want to be all day. And that's why people, you can't, we can't get the law of action confused with the law of attraction, right? To attract something, even then, there's a certain level of action that has to be taken to bring something forth. You can't just imagine, I want a BMW and somebody's going to drop the keys off. If you want a BMW, you might have to go outside and work for it and, go, and move around and do stuff. But then the more you do that, the closer you get to that BMW and the closer that BMW gets to you, Right? As opposed to assuming that you just think of something and it comes to you. No. There has to be equal, right, or opposite reaction. So you have to come at it just as much as you want it to come at you. It, 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 there's just, there's no other way that that works. You know, and like I said, that this law, not only does it apply in that manner, but then it also applies... Let me give you the best example that I could think of as of late. You know, I'm sure most of y'all have seen that uh, Tiger King, that documentary, right? Well, that zoo, it ain't nothing but 10, maybe, maybe 10, 12 miles up north from where I stay at. And um, what's unfortunate about that whole documentary is that, you know, a lot more focus was on that idiot Joe Dirt motherfucking... Uh, um, Joe Exotica, whatever his name is, you know, there was more attention on that group of misfits and idiots, you know, than, 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 than what was supposed to be focused on, which was, you know, the name of it is in the title, the Tigers. You see what I'm saying? Like, what the unfortunate thing is, is that that crazy lady who put Joe in jail and crazy ass Joe and all of his weirdos. Both, both of them, um, unfortunately, were doing exactly what happened. What happened to Joe is is what Joe was doing to those animals. Is basically what I'm trying to say. The reason why Joe was in the cage is because he put he was he was keeping those animals in the cage. So so his action of putting them tigers in cages mistreating them, selling them, doing whatever he wanted with them. Ultimately, the reaction to that got him in the cage, right? Now people are selling his, his likeness, right? Making money off of him. And now he's sitting in the cage. Now, 
whatever that name is, uh, that lady is, Carol, Basket, whatever, she going to get hers one way or another just because that's what nature does, right? What you put out is going to come back. That's, that's the law of action. We've heard that saying, you get back what you, what you put in, right? If you work hard, good results come. If you don't work hard, then nothing comes, right? If you don't put in nothing, don't expect nothing back. If you put in a lot, you're going to get back a lot. That is the law of action. There's so many sayings. What goes around comes around. The energy that goes around will come back around. The action that goes around will come back around. So what, what people, I, I, I honestly think and I'm convinced, I'm confident that a lot of people fail to understand is the fact that weird as Joe Dirt, a.k.a. Joe Exotica, is sitting in a cage is because he had those animals in a cage. And what we call karma, what we call every action is a reaction, is exactly what's being implemented onto him. But a lot of us fail to see that. All we want to see is how crazy he is and his life and you know, all the drama that came along with it. But we, we, we fail to neglect the only reason why these idiots are sitting in jails and doing what they're doing is because of their mistreatment on nature, which were those animals. Their mistreatment of nature is what got them in the shit that they're in right now. Their action is what got them the reaction that they are facing now. So we have to understand, folks, that when it comes to what you want in life, well, even if it's the things that, you're, that, that, that you don't want and you're getting, you have to understand that there's some kind of action that you are implementing that is getting you there, right? So if, so if you are constantly going to jail, right, for maybe DUIs, well, your action for goddamn drinking and driving is getting you the reaction of sitting in a goddamn jail. It's that simple. Right? Your action of constantly trying to drown your, maybe, maybe it's sorrow, maybe it's anger, maybe it's even happiness. You celebrate all the time. And, and every time you win, y'all go drinking. Right? That's the action. Right? And then the reaction is what? You get another DUI. What is the action that got you to the reaction? So if something is not going right in your life, you have to ask yourself, well, what am I doing? What am I doing to get to this place? Because sometimes what you're doing, you might not mean to, right? You might not even realize that's why you're getting to that reaction. But the more you analyze your action is the more you will understand your reaction. The more you specify your action is the more you will get to a detailed and specified reaction. It's that simple. Yes, <laughs> it's hard to implement, but it is that simple. That's the beautiful thing about nature, is it's opposites, right? It's, it can, it's easy. It's easy, but it can be hard to do, right? It could be hard to do, but it's good for you, right? Sometimes you got to push. Sometimes you got to push a little. And, and it's going to give. But sometimes you got to push. So every action, folks, has a reaction. Everything that we do, whether good or bad, we have some part to play in, good or bad. We have some kind of part to play in. So we have to understand, you know. And, and, and like I said, sometimes when I say these things, it's not even deliberately that things happen, right? If you get in a car wreck, it's not saying that you caused the car wreck. No. Unfortunately, the actions that you drove that way, that happened. That's not your fault. That's just what happened. That's just how it is. But understand that it took that action to get that reaction. Unfortunately. That's just how the game goes. But we have to understand that that's just part of why things happen. It's because of what was happening to cause why it happened. 
And now whether that is because of our own, you know, whether it's negligence or whether it's something that we did purposely, whether it was a good thing, whether it's a bad thing, at the end of the day, there is always going to be an action and there will always be a reaction. The more you focus on your intent on the action is the more you will have a more detailed and under, a, a more detailed reaction. All right? So in regards to the universal law of action, what goes around comes around, right? You give, you get back what you put in, right? Karma, what goes around comes around, okay? Even in, with Newton's third law, the same thing. Every action, there is equal or opposite, or opposite reaction. This is part of life. Everything that we do, there is going to be a reaction. So manifest, specify your actions to what you want them to be. And the more you keep pushing, the more that you will get to materializing exactly what you want done. The more you'll be able to materialize exactly what you have been envisioning. All right? So I appreciate your time, man. Like, share, subscribe. Y'all know what it is. Peace.